You are watching RxMuscle.com, the number one site for all your bodybuilding news. Yeah. You are watching RX. Not everyone knows this. Yeah. You are watching RxMuscle.com, the number one site for all your bodybuilding news. Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Black Crane Supplements. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is a very good friend of mine, and one of the perennial fixtures on the heavyweight bodybuilding scene through the 80s and 90s, and I'm talking about is Dean Caputo. Welcome. Thanks, Dave. Great to be here. Dean, I've been wanting to interview you for so long because you know, uh, you, you were around. You were the guy on the scene in that 80s and 90s, the, you know, the, during the heyday of the bodybuilding world. I mean, you've competed against some of the greatest bodybuilders in the world on the amateur level. And, uh, you know, probably had you been around at any other time in, in bodybuilding, you would have been an IFBB pro and, uh, and, and probably won a few pro shows in your day. Uh, take us back to how you first got into the bodybuilding scene. Uh, how you started, uh, kind of were bit by the bodybuilding or iron bug? Uh, well, when, when I was a teenager, I was into cars. I was a motorhead. You know, I really liked cars and stuff. And I was just 5'11", 140 pounds, super thin. And uh, something just came over me uh, in my junior year in high school that uh, I wanted to start lifting weights. I don't know where it came from. I just decided I went from being a motorhead over to wanting to uh, lift weights. So I started lifting weights. My body responded really good to it. And uh, over that summer, man, I went from, I drank a bunch of Joe Weider's powders, you know, the protein powders and stuff that was horrible tasting. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we uh, drank a whole bunch of that, just uh, trying to get as many calories. And I gained like uh, 15 pounds over the summer uh, into my senior year. And then the coach, football coach decided that uh, he liked the, you know, how much I was gaining and stuff and wanted me to be a center. So I started playing football. And then uh, I just realized that, you know, I wanted to do something for all my hard work. I want to do something that would I would be rewarded, not the whole team. I mean, I'm a team player, but, I, you know, I was working hard and everything. So my body just kept responding. The football practices were um, delaying my gains because, you know, I, I, it was just tearing me down uh, weight-wise. So I decided not to uh, do any more sports. I just did the, the lifting 100%. So through my senior year, I had so many guys coming over to my, my parents' garage where I had my whole weight room set up, and I had about 30 people over there. So I decided to start building machines and stuff like that and decided this is what I wanted to do and just lift weights and uh, decided, hey, I got about 30 people in my garage. Uh, so I looked at, uh, by the time I graduated high school, to renting a space in our local plaza and that's when I opened up my gym. I opened up my gym at uh, 18 years old, and I had most of the equipment already. I made it myself, the benches and stuff. That's and, uh, Yeah, and then uh, I just rented the back of a dry cleaning place. You know, it was like 65 bucks a month, and that was it, you know. And uh, next thing you know, the gym just kept growing and growing, and, and my body kept growing with it. And uh, then I decided I'm going to give this bodybuilding a try. And at the time, in 82, you know, the NPC was just starting out. And uh, we were actually, I entered the Teenage Ohio North District, and uh, it, um, it uh, was, went by height, not by uh, um, body weight or anything. And it was the AAU at the time. And uh, then the MPC uh, came about right after that, and I was MPC from then on in, you know, because it was here. So I ended up winning the Teenage Ohio, by the way, anyways. So. That's a that's that's right. on the screen. We, we're watching you with uh, Matt Mendenhall at the uh, '87 Nationals. Wow, that's that's an old picture, huh? Yeah, that was my first. That was my first uh, dip into the Nationals. You know, I just had won the '86 Junior National Heavyweights, and uh, that was my first Nationals there. And it was it was just an honor. I didn't care if I took last place. Just standing next to all those guys, you know. You know, you were the. Uh, you told me that you're one of you have one of the honors at the Mr. Ohio contest of being the oldest teen to win the teens and the youngest guy to win the open. Is that right? Is this yeah. See, what happened was I entered the teenage Ohio and I turned 20 years old the next day. So, oh. <laughs> so I was doing, yeah. And then I entered the Ohio right after that. And I was the youngest person to win the Ohio. 
That's crazy. Now, back then, there weren't a lot of guys bodybuilding. There wasn't a lot of good guys. And if you were a standout type of person, you stuck out. Who, who kind of was one of the guys that mentored you when you were first starting out? Because there wasn't like gurus and coaches and there wasn't online stuff. You had to kind of just find who was in your area, kind of. Yeah, you got to understand, back in 82, I was the only gym other than this other gym called Bodybuilders Incorporated in Northeast Ohio. There was nothing. And so throwing, you know, you just throw weights and a bench and some machines in a building and it's going to be an awesome gym because nobody's ever seen nothing like that. Right. And that's the same with bodybuilding. I mean, that, you know, nobody did it. And um, there was still like, you know, you still get, you know, 60, 70 guys in a show back then, which was big, you know, back then. And, uh, you know, so I had to do it all by just reading magazines and um, watching videos and stuff like that, you know, that you can find um, in the library and stuff because it didn't have Internet or nothing. And by the time I got down to the Ohio, um, I was so I just gave that one that that was my that was the show in 1984 that really either was a make or break for me because I wanted to make sure that either I'm going to do this for the rest of my life or just do it as a hobby. And so that show, I, I uh, came out, I did four poses and I was a light heavy. I went down from 247 to 198 and I was super depleted and uh, did four poses and they threw me off to the side and I told everybody, I'm done. I'm never doing this again. I'm going to do something <laughs> else. And here I had been so far ahead of everybody else, they didn't need to see me do any more posing at the at the um, at the prejudging. Well, the person sitting there head judging was John Perillo, and that's when right after that, right after the uh, prejudging, John, you know, got a hold of me and and uh, mentored me for for a few years after that. Yeah, John was one of the first real coaches back then. And yeah, there was no such thing as coaches whatsoever, and he was the first. He he was the pioneer of it all. Dean, maybe can you turn your volume down on your on your computer a little bit? Because I, I think we're getting a little bit of feedback. Um, just if you can make it a little lower where I'm speaking. So, yeah, how's that? Um, check, check. Yeah, that's better. Okay, let's continue. All right. So uh, John Perola gets a hold of you. Uh, he was one of the guys, you know, who was really had knowledge with regard to supplementation, with regard to diet. Um, up until that point. Where were you getting your information, like on what to eat and how to get ready for shows, and and I mean, what supplements you needed to take? Where where was this knowledge coming from? It was uh, Muscle and Fitness, uh, you know, just the magazines, whatever magazines were out there, and there was wasn't many. Like Flex Magazine wasn't around. It was just Muscle and Fitness, and um, uh, uh, Muscle Training Illustrated. And I would just get those magazines and kind of just read what these guys were doing. And, and, and I remember for the Teenage Ohio, I was just eating, uh, you know, beef patties, poached eggs, and salad because that's what Arnold did. You know, that's what he had in the magazine. And that's all I ate. And that's why I got so depleted. You know, I was eating no carbs. Right. right. So it was, all, it was all trial and error back then. Yeah. No, I, it, because people don't realize that we take for granted all the information that we have out there today that it just wasn't around at that point in time. Um, at, at what point did you say to yourself, you know what, I think I'm ready to take that jump to the junior national level, the national level, test out what I've been doing locally? Well, I'm a big advocate, and I even see, even say today to a lot of these youngsters that it's just, it's crazy how they jump from like a city level meet up to the junior nationals. It just, it just boggles my mind, and the way that I planned out mine. Once I, once I won that Ohio that night, I said, you know what, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it till I'm 30 years old. Give, give it a shot, and then hey, by the time I'm 30, if I'm not doing what, where I want to be, then I'm gonna move on. So I planned it all out, and I said, you know, I want to win. You know, I won the states. Now I want to w win a regional. You know, and that's when I entered the uh, Midwest America and the Eastern USA. And I thought I'm not going to go to the junior nationals until I win those shows because I don't feel like I'm good enough until I win those shows. So I ended up winning both of those in '85. Uh -huh. And I thought, okay, now I made it to this this level. Um, and I won the overalls. So that's when I started training for the '86 junior nationals. Gotcha. And, and when you, at some point, I don't remember when it was. I think I got into really into really reading the magazines probably in 1988 it was. And I remember seeing you in the GNC ads. I mean, I think that probably made you more popular than any competition you ever did because everyone knew who you were, especially if you 
there wasn't a lot of companies out there and GNC was probably the biggest at that point. Every advertisement for every bodybuilding show had them in there. They were doing commercials on TV. How did you land that deal? Uh, I, my good friend Dave Hawk. Dave Hawk called me and asked if, you know, he, they offered it to him. And he was doing something else at the time. And he said, you know, he's just going to, he's not going to do it. And then he said, but I got a guy. Because they, they described the kind of guy they want. And it was my look. And so they contacted me uh, because of good old Dave. And I have him to thank for that big time, um, you know, come down to Pittsburgh and, and uh, they're going to be putting this pro performance line together. And uh, they actually, because by then I was trying different things, uh, getting different powders, putting my own flavorings in it and stuff. So I was kind of doing things back then and, and Dave knew that. And uh, so they kind of asked, Hey, can you help us also, you know, put some of these products together and uh, yeah, that was the biggest thing that launched my career big time. Um, and that's why I try and tell a lot of people that, you know, these shows are great and everything and titles are great. But you know what? The, no title could have ever got gave me gave anybody the publicity that the GNC did for me back then. What, just, what were you getting paid then? Because this was way, way you know, a long time ago. This was about 30 years ago now. Yeah, uh, 1988. Now listen to this. You want to hear something funny? I asked, can I get a penny a can, a penny a, a jar? No way. They wouldn't let me do it. Wow. No way. <laughs> and, and then I said, okay, you know what they paid? $4,000. And back then, that was like a million dollars to me. And that was it. It was a one-time pay, wow. nothing else. Really? But, hey, I looked at it. I'm a businessman. I looked at it as, you know what? I, you know, I was living in an apartment for 150 bucks a month at the time. $4,000 was huge. And what what I looked at is what is this? What other avenues of revenue is this GNC gig going to give me? And it gave me tons. Yeah. Oh, you did. I didn't realize that. So you weren't getting paid like a salary every month. You you got a one time fee, and they got to use your pictures. They that was probably it. still use them today if they want to, right? Oh yeah, they they, they own those for life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But you know what though? I got so many other uh, commercials and endorsements because of it. You know. Right. Now, you, uh, Dean, you were in uh, two what I like to call mega shows uh, in the bodybuilding amateur world. In 1991, Flex Wheeler was kind of like being groomed at this point to, to, to win that USA Championships. Uh, and I think it was, uh, everyone thought it was all but a foregone conclusion. Now, that lineup was stellar. Uh, Matarazzo, Mike Matarazzo had uh, come out of nowhere pretty much. He had moved out to California right before that, was living with Ed Connors, I believe. Jumped into that USA, wound up winning that uh, USA and uh, kind of just nudging Flex Wheeler by a couple, maybe a point or two. You were in third place. A lot of people didn't realize that. Tell me about that line of what it was like backstage uh, watching these guys pump up. Oh, it, it was it was amazing. Um, you know, because now by 91, I was already, you know, in the Nationals a few years and, you know, uh, kind of had my 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 place up there and stuff like that. But but um yeah, being back there, I mean, you know, you got to you got to understand the lineup was, you know, Matarazzo, Flex Wheeler, Chris Cormier, uh, Ronnie Coleman was in that lineup. If you look at it, I mean, there's a lot of good good bodybuilders, and and that's not just the heavyweights. I mean, there's a whole other all the other lineups were great too. It was it was a great show. It was a really good tough show. Did were you like uh, as flabbergasted ever as everyone else was when you saw what Matarazzo looked like backstage? Because no one no one saw this guy coming, obviously. Wait, what did you say? It was kind of cutting out. Uh, what were you as flabbergasted as everyone else was when you saw what Matarazzo looked like backstage? Because no one saw this guy coming, you know. Well, you know the way that I was when I went to these shows is I only I only worried about myself and and I wouldn't even look at them guys until we were done and and I never never looked backstage to see what anybody was doing. I was kind of off in my own thing and I really kept to myself mentally. So I couldn't tell you, you know nobody really really you know blew my mind uh, until after i see the pictures you know what i mean yeah so Matarazzo wins flex gets nudged now the next big show is the, the nationals probably i don't know how many weeks it was probably 12 to 16 weeks later that's usually what it, it, it ran and everyone's thinking well matarazzo has gone we got Fle you must have been thinking it's me and flex wheeler now i got to beat one guy and all of a sudden you know the the junior nationals that year we saw Paul DeMeo win, nudge out some new guy by the name of Kevin Lavroni. Now you show up at Nationals and you got Flex Wheeler, <laughs> you got uh, you got Paul DeMeo, 
You got Kevin Lavroni, Ronnie Coleman, yeah. who, ne- who is now rising up the ranks. Mendenhall's back, jumps back into this show. Ba- what was that like backstage at this show? I mean, it was like it was like almost like a superstar, you know, group of guys. Well, you know, in '91, you got to remember that the the Nationals were being held in a different city than Pittsburgh, but something happened with the promoter where he couldn't do it. So the NPC, you know, and, you know, Jimmy had to take this thing over and hold, that's why it was held in Pittsburgh that year. Right. And, and, uh, you know, everybody was saying, you know, you guys, I, cause I wasn't going to go in it. I already was dieting for, for 30 weeks before the junior, before the USA in July. Right. And this show right. is until September. So my body was shot, you know, and, and, and they, they said, no, you know, you got to go in, got to go in. It's between you and flex, you know, cause you guys were second and third and, you know, going on and on and on. I'm like, oh, I don't think my body's going to hold out. Well, what happened was, you know, the harder I dieted, it my body just kept creeping up in weight. I mean, I weighed in at two, I weighed in at two fifty six. Wow. In in ninety one at the USA, I was two sixty six at the Nationals, and I was holding a lot of water. My body just shut down and w- was not responding to anything. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I saw the lineup, I'm like, well, you know. We'll try to let's see if we can get um, Dean back here. Uh, we broke up a little bit, but yeah, what people don't realize is this was well, no matter. Oh, there we go, uh, Dean. We just lost you for a minute there. So you yeah, it seemed like it froze bodies, up. Did it freeze up? Yeah, you were telling us that your body, the water, uh, wasn't coming off your body. Back then. Yeah, so uh, you know, I weighed in at like it was like two sixty two or two sixty six somewhere around there, and uh, just really smooth. And I knew I was way off, and mentally I was burnt. And, but then, you know, seeing all them guys, you know, even if I would have came in at my best, you know, I, these guys were phenomenal. You know, Mendenhall was great. Uh, you know, Leverone just blew everybody away. And, you know, it just, DeMeo, uh, like you said, I mean, it was, a, it was an unbelievable lineup. What, what do you think was going on with um, Matt Mendenhall? What, and, I mean, you knew him. Why, why couldn't he pull the trigger and, and get that pro card? He had all the tools necessary. Um. He never really came in hard enough. That guy had the greatest – he was one of my idols. You know, he had the greatest shape. You know, we're both from Ohio. And, uh, you know, it just – he never had that real dry, hard look, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that's what kind of held him back. Yeah. So that 91 Nationals was Lavroni first, obviously Wheeler second, DeMeo third, Ronnie Coleman fourth, Mendenhall uh, was fifth, Ciccarello was sixth, Chris Cormier seventh, Edgar Fletcher eighth. I mean, that was, and then you were ninth. That was like unbelievable, uh, that, that lineup in and of itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Every one of those guys was phenomenal. So you decide, did you take off, decide to take off the next year? Yeah. Um, well, in, uh, that was 90, 91. No, I was in the, I, I think I was in the, I can't remember. I think I was in the 92 Nationals um, in Orlando, I think it was. Yeah. And I was a little bit off there. And then in 93, I really gave it my all. And I was in my best shape ever. Um, but I think by then, you know, you, you had a lot of a lot of the new guys coming up. Um, you know, it just, you know, I don't, it's like I, I you want to compete against other guys, but sometimes you end up competing against yourself, and um, it, it can hurt you uh, sometimes. So I just uh, I just decided, you know what? I was in my best shape. I want to end it on a great note. Uh, I really looked up to Jim Brown in football, and Jim Brown stopped playing in his best. I didn't want to keep going and uh, end up having show after show just going down and down in placing. So that's why I decided, you know what? I'm going to go out on the, on the best that I was. You finished fifth in that lineup. That was the year Mike Francois won. Dennis Newman was second. Edgar Fletcher third. Don Long fourth. Uh, that was a, that was a stellar year. I mean, all, all of you yeah. guys were unbelievable. I remember that year. I was looking. That was right before I kind of entered the national level, and I was like, "Holy mackerel! These are the guys I got to go up against." Uh, so it was a really tough year. And you know, it, people don't realize it's hard when you're in your prime and you were a young guy still to walk away. I mean, what did you do with yourself when you? I mean, I know you were still promoting shows. You had the gym. What what were you doing to kind of distract yourself from the competition, so to speak? Um, I never, you know, my father taught me a thing that, you know what, you know, everybody always said, why did you stay in Streetsboro, Ohio, a little town in Ohio? You know, my dad always told me that you'll never be a star in your own town and people will treat you just like you were when you were 16 years old. And it really kept my head level and uh, I never let it really get to me. 
So, you know, I was more at that time getting more into the business, uh, the supplement industry, and I was my, my, my interests were more into that at the time. So it, it didn't mentally really phase me too much to give up the competing part of it. I wanted to be the guy behind the scenes and I wanted to start making some money, you know, behind the scenes. Uh, so that's why I was able to transition pretty, e- pretty easy at the time. Now, did you, I think you kind of stepped away from bodybuilding altogether. You just stopped working out, I believe. Wasn't it for a period of time? Yeah, I kept working out for a little while, and then uh, once we, me and my wife uh, Monica, started having kids, we were like, you know, I'm just, I'm too busy with business, and I was too involved in that that I totally walked away from even lifting any kind of weights for eight years. I didn't do nothing. Yeah, I remember you brought me in as a guest poser for your your powerhouse classic, and I was like. And I didn't recognize you, because I and I knew you. I was one of the guys. You know, you were kind of like one of the guys I looked up to when I first got it. I didn't recognize you because you really you hadn't worked out at all, and uh, I was shocked. You know, and you were like, ah, yeah. yeah, you know, you were smoking cigars with the guys at the house. I remember when you. When yeah, I came over. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, I was I was guess I was guess posing at two hundred ninety eight pounds. So I, I go from you know my heaviest was three hundred five. This is back in the you know the eighties, and right. you know so that that was you know, had some good size. And boy, when I went down to, you know, 240 and didn't lift, you know, people were like shocked, but it never, I never let it bother me, you know, cause I had other goals, right. you know, I, I, I did what I wanted to do and, and, uh, now I'm back into it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm lifting good again. So no, yeah, that's what, that was my next question. How, what, what inspired you to say, you know what, I got to get back to the gym and get myself back in shape again. Well, you know, I was putting you know, business and, you know, all the family. Now the kids are grown. They're, they're getting older now. Um, putting all that ahead of my health at the time. And about two years ago, I had a, a little scare with some high blood pressure. I was in the, put in the hospital and stuff like that. And uh, they said, you know, you got high blood pressure and, and you got to start doing something. So that's when I decided that, you know what, I'm going to get back into it for my health. And uh, next thing you know, I just, it, I got bit by the bug again. And uh, I just, I, I trained just like I used to. But, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not concerned about being real big. I just want to be in shape and be healthy. Right. No, I hear you. No, I'm, I'm completely on board with that. And uh, talk to us a little bit about the business of bodybuilding, because I think that's what a lot of bodybuilders don't get. They think that all you have to do is get up on stage and do well in competition and the money will come to you. And that's just not the case, especially in today's day when there's just not as much money in these supplement companies anymore because there's so many of them. Um, you got involved with a brand, you know, you were kind of sim- synonymous with that brand. And then you, you know, and also you had your gym and your shows. Talk to us how you, you got into doing all this and what advice can you give to maybe some guys out there who are upcoming now who might want to be looking into getting into business as well. Yeah, you know, everybody, you know, you know, everybody, even back then, a lot of the guys would sit back, hey, I, I turned pro, you know, I, I, I won the nationals, you know, in my weight class. And they thought the phone was going to ring off the hook. And it, it, that's just not the case. You know, you, you have to go after it. When I was, you know, in the magazines and I was in my prime, you know, I went after, you know, um, promoters. I would promote myself. I'd send them eight by tens. You know, back then there was no internet. There was no way of promoting yourself. So I would send eight by tens and a bio and I'd call every promoter in the country and, and ask them. And I'd, you know, I'd guess post for 800 bucks or a thousand bucks, you know, but I was booked every weekend in, in 93, uh, or in 1991, after I won, uh, took third in the USA, I was booked 43 weekends in a row. Wow. And, wow. uh, yeah, I was, I was doing a lot of guest appearance cause I promoted myself. Nobody, nobody did it for me. And, uh, so then I did the same thing when I was, uh, you know, going after and trying to be in the supplement industry, you know, is got with a company and, and worked hard at it. And, uh, you know, I wasn't there saying, Hey, I want to be endorse this. I want to, I want to be a part of it. And, uh, so you have to go after it. You have to figure out how to promote yourself and you have to figure out what you can do for a company that both of you are going to get something out of it. Uh, don't just be in it. Just sit there and take the money and use my picture, and that's it. It's not like that anymore. You know, you have to now with social media and everything. You you got to offer something to a company that you both can win at this. That's the only way you're going to do anything in the business world. And um, and then you know with the shows, you know, I, I just wanted to start. You know, my partner Greg Kraus and his wife Michelle and my wife Monica. We all been promoting these uh, bodybuilding shows and fitness shows for almost you know over 25 years now. And uh, I always, I always enjoyed that, 
you know, because that's you can totally have control of it and push it and promote it all you want. And then I was we're kind of giving back to to the to the sport that gave me my life that I have today. Now, you got involved with Will and uh, Norm Dabish, who were the uh, founders of the Powerhouse Gym franchise. Matter of fact, you got a great picture on your Instagram uh, of you guys when you were really young. And uh, how did you uh, how'd you meet up with them and, and what made you decide to want to open a, a Powerhouse Gym? Um, uh, well, the power. What happened there is I was in the uh, I was in the Niagara Falls. They had a uh, back then. They had where the pros and amateurs would compete against each other, and it was a Niagara Fa Niagara Falls Grand Grand Prix. Right. And uh, you know it was kind of wild. They'd throw amateurs up there with the pros. You know, so I was up there with Robbie Robinson and Bob Paris, but then I was up there with amateurs too. You know, it was pretty neat. And it was on ESPN at the time, and uh, I went on a guest appearance up to Michigan for Will Dabish. I was guest posing at the Mr. Michigan after that show, and uh, Norm Dabish, we were out to dinner, Norm Dabish said, hey, Dean, I, I want you to try and find somebody for me. He goes, I saw this blonde bodybuilder. He owns a gym in Streetsboro, Ohio, and uh, I, I'd like for you to get a hold of him. I'd like to have talk to him, maybe turn him into powerhouse. And I said, well, Norm, that's me. He started cracking up. He never realized that was me. And from then on, that's when I became a powerhouse. That's funny. Yeah, the Dabishes were great. I mean, if they liked you, you were sad. I remember uh, Norm and Will said to me, you can go to any powerhouse you want, whenever you want. If anyone gives you any flip, you call me up and, and, and I'll, and I'll yeah. make sure that they let you in. That's the kind of guys they were. There was like a family. I know, I know Steve Weinberger still has a powerhouse gym. What, yeah. Whatever happened to your gym that you had? Well, I had it, you know, I had it all the way from 1982 to 1998, but I was so busy with the supplement business um, that I wasn't able to be at the gym as much. And, you know, it's like the bar business. They'll rob you blind. And I thought I better... I better do something with it. So I sold it in 98 and it was, it was hard because that was my heart and soul, you know? And, uh, you know, once it sold in powerhouse, you know, it was no longer a powerhouse after that, but I was and still am a total powerhouse soldier and, uh, God rest, uh, Norm Dabish, you know, uh, love the guy to death. He was the, both him and Will treated me just like a brother and, uh, I will be loyal to them forever. What do you think of the gym business today? I mean, with all the Planet Holly, with the Planet Fitnesses out there, and all the bargain basement ten dollar a month deals they got going, um, can you make money in the gym business still? It's got to be tough. It's got to be tough. You got to have your niche. Like I had my niche where I had, I went after the hardcore people, and uh, you know we had. A, I'm right by Kent State, so we had a lot of the, a lot of the college students coming down. Had a lot of the bodybuilders, powerlifters back then. Um, how Planet Fitness can get away with what they get away with, you know, not letting big guys in there and throwing them out and stuff like that. It just it just boggles my mind. And uh, today I would not want to own a gym because it just it's so cutthroat and tough. And in, in around where I'm at, you know, we have these community centers that are free, you know, to the public. And uh, it would be tough. It's got to be. And it takes a lot of money to open a gym today. Back in my day, I opened that gym with 400 bucks, you know. And I, I sold it for thousands and thousands of dollars. <laughs> you, you can't do that today, no. you know. No. So let's talk about the uh, what started as the Dean Caputo Powerhouse Classic. Now it now it's called the North Coast Championships, which is going to be taking place uh, on May 26 this year at uh, Kent State University. You've kind of rekindled the show, uh, and it's been tremendously successful for you. Uh, are you amazed at how many people enter these shows now? I mean, when we were if when we were competing, if there was a hundred guys in a show, it was the best show you could possibly go to. Nowadays, right. I mean, that's like chump change. You know, you're getting a couple, two, three, four hundred people in a show. Is is it is that the new business model to get involved with promoting? Yeah, back when we had the powerhouse, we only had bodybuilding, and when when you guest posed for us, we yeah. just started the fitness. And uh, so we were had the women's bodybuilding, the men's bodybuilding. Like you said, if you had 90 to 100 competitors, that was a huge show. And, um, you know, we used to bring in, you know, I don't know if you remember, but we had four or five guest posters. Yeah. We were first ones to do that, yeah. you know. Uh, you know, uh, so and, and the reason I did that, because I, a lot of these guys were my friends. And a lot of my new were unreliable, so, <laughs> so so I said, you know what, we better get three or four in case one, you know, cancels out on us, you know, right, right. and uh, and so that's how it started, you know, getting up to three and four and five guest posers, and you know, and people used to come for the guest poser. I mean, it was huge back then. 
But then uh, we started seeing that the women's bodybuilding started dying down a little bit. Even the men's bodybuilding started dying down a little bit. And uh, I remember Harry Cummins, this promoter, a friend of mine over in uh, Toledo, Ohio, he said, hey, I got to – you're not gonna believe this. I had a bikini contest out in my parking lot, and I had like a thousand people standing there watching these bikini girls. We ought to see if we can do something where we get bikini and you know up on stage, you know, with the bodybuilders. And and uh, at the time, you know, NPC had no bikini, right. and uh, right. you know, so thank God. And I asked him. I said, did any of the audience from the bikini contest in the parking lot go into the venue to see the bodybuilding he, he said probably maybe only 200 people mm -hmm. and so that's when i think you know you know we started looking at man we got to start doing something get more more you know average people involved in this and thank god the mpc boy i tell you that bikini division and the figure division has made the npc grow like crazy and that's what made these shows grow, grow, uh, grow like crazy and men's physique too. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. See, men's physique and because it's a little bit easier to attain than being a bodybuilder. And a lot of the a lot of the the the, the thought process today is, you know, I, I don't really want to be this big bodybuilder. I want to be in shape and look good, you know. And and that's where the physique came in. And yeah, when they added all these divisions, that's what really got me excited. And 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 the, it brought a whole new revenue of interest into the sport. All right, here's, here's my question of the uh, afternoon. You've been married 20 years now, Dean. What's the secret to, to that success? <laughs> <laughs> we, we still act like we're dating. And that's, 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 we always keep it like we're dating. You know, we never get caught in the, in the, uh, mixture of, oh, we're married and stuff like that. You know, we, we even, and, and Dave, I never thought I'd say this in a million years and people that know me thought I'd never do it, but I'm actually training in the morning with my wife. You believe wow. that we, we trained again. I never trained with a woman ever, <laughs> but, you've been, uh, you've been domesticated we, Dean. That's what the problem is. Yeah, we get we get up at five thirty in the morning, and we we train before we get the kids off the school, and uh, you know we we work good together on the show, you know, and um, and our partners Greg and Michelle Krause are phenomenal. We've been together since we've you know been doing this promoting. Uh, it's just a great fit, but uh, yeah, keep it like you're dating. That's what we do. So Dean, what, like on a typical day for you now, when you go to, you know, you, you get the kids off the school, what do you do now? Are you back to the old bodybuilding lifestyle? Like, hey, I got my day free. No, no, no. I got, you know, I'm the I'm the VP of marketing and product development for Natural Sport, okay. and uh, you know, we're constantly, you know, working all day long, you know, for eight, ten hours a day, working on the uh, the company, you know, uh, developing products, marketing, and stuff like that, and so just busy with that. So I have a full day. You know, we train. Like I said, that's why I get up at five, five thirty. Uh, we get our training done out of the way. Then I'm at I'm at the office all day and. And then at night we're taking care of the kids. Where whether my son Giovanni's in basketball or whether my metal my, my daughter medals in golf, you know we're we're busy until we go to bed. Are you are you one of these crazy fathers with the sports? Do you get like super involved and like you know scream at the referees and stuff like that? Or are you kind of like a sideline kind of guy? No, I scream for the kids. You know, the kids all laugh at me because they say I'm the loudest mouth. Like, I'll run up and down the football. I'll run up and down the sidelines or, you know, on the basketball court. I'm running up and down the basketball court, you know, yelling for the kids. I, I don't get – I don't want to be one of those parents yelling at the refs and stuff, you know. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, I, I think I'll probably be a, a cheerleader on the sideline too because you know what happens? It's fun. You, you start it's living great. vicariously through your kids at some point, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> Dean, if, uh, before we go, uh, if you had to give a look into the camera and give advice to young guys coming up in the bodybuilding world, what would be your number one thing that you would tell them to, to really focus on most? What's the most important thing for them to, to realize? They have to realize their potential and take it in stride of, of – how they're gaining that potential. Um, don't jump. Don't go from a you know, hey, I qualified. Uh, this is what kills me when these people will qualify in a show that's just like a local show. They qualify for the nationals and they think they're ready. And they go up there and they realize, oh my God, what did I do? And then it really mentally messes them up. They need to take everything in stride and in different levels and 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 have one big goal but have a bunch of little goals and meet those little goals that's what you got to do no matter if you're competing or not competing have the you know hit those little goals don't jump up and expect it to happen overnight it just doesn't happen that way 
You know, it can go as fast as it comes. So just take it as it is. Thanks. And, and Thanks. Dean, if you, uh, I know you're doing some coaching and, and consulting online. If people want to get in touch with you, DeanCaputo.com, correct? Yes, yes. I, uh, you know, all these years from even back when I had my gym, you know, and I was helping people and training people. Um, I don't consider myself a personal trainer, but I just want to help people. And people kept asking me all the time, can you, can you help me out? Can you do this? So I thought, you know what, with the internet now, I just started up a website. It's just something I do, you know, on the side. I don't take a lot of clients, um, but I do try and help as many people as I can, you know, with the time I have. And yeah, it's DeanCaputo.com. I have a lot of information on there. Uh, you can go on there and read about different articles of uh, training and stuff like that and videos too. And if people want to sign up for the, uh, the, North, the North Coast Championships on the 26th of May, how do they do that? Uh, they can go to uh, North Coast Championships with an S dot com and they can uh, you know, view all the different uh, categories and information about the show. They can download an um, uh, entry form from there or they can email us at info at North Coast Champs Dot com and we'll send them out entry forms and everything like that and yeah it's a the show is really going great you know we have a um, we have the, all the NPC events you know the bodybuilding the fitness we actually added fitness this year um, bringing that back and uh, we got figure and bikini and colleg we got the collegiate bikini and collegiate physique mm -hmm. but uh, we also have a it's not um, a part of the NPC but it's a fitness model search and uh, we we started that last year had a great response and uh, we're gonna bring it back this year it's the fitness model search and we're actually giving one thousand um, dollars prize money to the overall winners one male and one female for that and and then we have a, a bench press challenge uh, that's gonna be going on all day so people can come and try and win 250 bucks um, you know in the bench press challenge uh, Dean uh, can the bikini and figure girls cross over to that um, model search yes yes they can cross over and uh, it, it's it's uh, with, with no problem okay Sounds great. Uh, Dean, I want to really thank you for taking time. I know you're a really busy schedule. You snuck us in uh, and did this interview, but I think a lot of people don't know who you are, and I think now they do, and uh, that was some great advice you gave to the uh, bodybuilding community today. Thank you. No, thanks, Dave. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, really appreciate RX Muscle and everything you do. Thank you so much. All right. That's the uh, North Coast Championships on May 26th. Check it out at the website. If you want to get in touch with Dean, deancaputo.com. For now, though, that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Black Crane Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.